Now let's move on to our other matters. I thought the whole work from home COVID era was over, but we learned today that 70% of the public servants in Tony Burke's Department of Employment and Workplace Relations are working from home. I mean, is that good enough? That's a fairly key ministry <laughs> to have most of the workforce in their pyjamas at home. Well, looking at what he's churning out, I'm not surprised. You know, we have a situation <laughs> where it's do as I say, not what I do, because he's the man who's telling uh, employers that they have to allow their staff to disconnect, that they... The, the staff virtually rule the roost now and the employer is going to get fined and face all sorts of prosecutions if he doesn't allow, you know, his workers or her her workers to, you know, be, be hands off. And it's just ridiculous because when you're running a business, as I do, you need to be able to contact your employees. It may be actually to say, don't come to work tomorrow. You've worked so hard, you know, stay home. It's so absurd that we have this situation. There's enough pressure on employers now without introducing all these ridiculous laws. And I just hope, I know that the opposition's talking about getting rid of them the minute they get in. But in the meantime, we have Burke, who's just falling over backwards to accommodate his union masters. None of these ministers have ever worked in private enterprise and would know the hardships that face, uh, you know, business. So it's, it's hypocrisy gone crazy. Well, let's have a look at what's happening with public servants in New South Wales and how much they're earning. A new report shows that there's 166 bureaucrats in New South Wales earning salaries higher than Premier Chris Minns. Uh, again, Prue, is this money well spent? Uh, it could be that if you need to attract the best candidates, you've got to pay those sort of salaries, those sorts of salaries. Well... I agree with you. If you've got the best people in the jobs, then you definitely, when you're uh, competing with the commercial world, have to pay them a, an equitable amount. But in this case, let's look, for example, the Department of Transport. It is pathetic. Everything it touches seems to be stuffed up. In Sydney, for example, we have this uh, shocking Roselle. Uh, it it's just a nightmare. This, uh, that's all I, you can call it, a Roselle nightmare where, you know, it's costing people and productivity millions of dollars because they've just planned it so badly. And it's happening in virtually every bureaucracy around New South Wales and I'm sure in other states. So if we can attract the right people, but the problem is it's a public service. They have a mentality where everything has to be group think. They have to have kumbaya sessions. And sadly, we have a situation where, you know, we have in inept people earning these big salaries and not serving the public. And I would argue that you just simply do not have the pressures you have in the private sector and the accountability there. The job security in the public service seems to be quite good for those bureaucrats. Uh, yeah. Now let's go to Victoria, where City of Melbourne Lord Mayor Sally Capp's pet project, the Green Line, well, it may end up costing us $500 million, if it's ever built, that is. The project was estimated to cost $316 million, but sources close to the project have told the Herald Sun the final figure is a lot closer to $500 million. We keep seeing these big projects blow out, whether it's state governments, local government, federal government, and it's our money. Well, this is the thing. It's public servants, again, who obviously haven't done realistic business modelling and costings and it shows you again how inept they are and they don't care because it's not their money. In particular, Sally Capps has this totally progressive woke agenda. She's been overstepping the mark for Melbourne City Council. I mean, for goodness sake, I don't know. She's obviously using it as a job, uh, you know, profile raising so she can get into, you know, federal or state po politics more so. But, you know, this is the woman who, you know, wanted to ban whips in horse racing and, you know, Australia Day. She's had her fingers in everything. This green line thing sounds like a great idea, but haven't we got other priorities, I would have thought, for Victoria, which is billions of dollars in debt. You know, you know, it's like a household. When you have huge debt, you have to pull the reins in and all these lovely fantasy projects 
things that you'd like to do have yeah. to be put on the shelf. But sadly for her, she's out. She wants to raise her bro profile and this is like one big job in interview for her.